הוא במחלתה איתה, ביום ההוא יאכול מראש חודש, נראה את הסבידה פתק לדאי, או כבר לא דיבי מראש חודש. מה זה כבישי נדה הגדה? תמוד אמר ביום ההוא. אי ביום ההוא יאכול בעוד יום, אוקיי, זה הדאי, אבל אתה יודע, prior to the day, a little bit beforehand. תמוד אמר בעבור זה, לא אמרתי, אלא בשעה שמסע ומרור, מונחים לפניך. No, it can't be from before. It has to only be when the Masa Maron is running. That is the time for Sipuri Shat Masai. Akkad. Behuwa Bahagada. Behain wush sariq shah ki'ara tehe munnaha de fanab kol zeman ha seder. Hus me ha seoda shahe kilu bazze. They tell you over here that the ki'ara needs to be placed in front of you the entire time. the entire order of the night, except for the Sa'udah, for the meal itself, for the meal they will lean in. And afterwards, during the time of the Afikumin, we return the Ka'ara to its place. The Yitav Gemara, and like it says the Gemara, the Amar Shemuel, Lechem Oni, Lechem Sha'onim Alav Devarim Harbeh, Okay, Shemuel is doing a play on words in the Gemara. Instead of referring to it as Lechem Aoni, poor man's bread, but Aoni from La'anot, to answer. Lechem She'aunim alav de'bin harbeh. The bread upon which we answer a lot of things. We talk a lot about it and everything involved with it. Upereshe she, she'gumim alav ta'halil ve'umim alav ha'gada. And the she's interpretation over there was, that over we finish the Halil with this Lechem Oni and we say the entire Haggadah with this bread. Atkan. Vim ke nimsa shi zeman amilat Haggadah talui bizman akhidat masa. Therefore it seems that that we understand that the time of saying the Haggadah is dependent upon the time of eating the masa. Bechin katab bishelot shuvot mishkinot Yaakob וכן הוא במנחת חינוך, וכן בעמק ברכה עין שם. ולפי זה, הם עשינו מחלוקת הנאים. דלרבי אלעזר בן עזריה, זמן אכילה מסע עד חסות. Right, we see in the Gemara, rather in the, what do you call it? In the Mishnah, rather, that, according to Rabbi Elazar בן עזריה, the time of eating מסע is until חסות. ולבי עקיבא, זה מנה כל הלילה, יהיה בן טיינט. ואמר לה, אכל מסע בזמן הזה, אחר חסות. רבי אלעזר בן עזריה, לא יעשה ידי חובתו, תיקש לפסח. עד כאן. Anyway, so we're in the Gemara, right, on Mesechet Pesachim, 120b. Gemara, b'achal masa b'zman hazeh achal chasot. Okay? Achal masa b'zman hazeh achal chasot. The Rabbi Al-Azhar bin Azariya, go ya say yadeh hubato. Okay? According to the opinion of Rabbi Al-Azhar bin Azariya, it's enough of the obligation, and it's very, very simple according to him. Why? Because that eating... of the Afikumim, what we're talking about from this, what we're referring to over here, is connected, you know, to the Pesach. And the Pesach also, you can only eat it until Hasot, you cannot eat it after Hasot. And so the same thing with the Afikumim. Okay. Fa'akshu ala Harunim. And now the Harunim have questions. Ma ma si bil azar bil bil azar bil azar yal bil akibar, the whole gets, okay? So you must be min berak, okay? כל אותו הלילה. והאל ביעזב אל עזריה סבירה לילה מסע ופסח על חסות. ונאמר בפעם, מסע על פסח אצל חסות. ומדוע ישב עם מהן ספקו הלילה? If the מזווה is, you know, is all connected and the only time you say it is when the things are in front of you and you can only eat until חסות, why did he, who had that opinion, why did he sit with them the entire night? 
ודעת משכנות יעקב, שחזר בו, והודה להם שזמני כל הלילה. Right. אולם בעין ברכה כתב דאשר שכיוון שישר עמהם מתייחס אל הלילה בא, לא, כל בלי רצון שיסעו אותם מפני בגין הלילה לא נעשה לפרוש מהם כשהגיע חסרות He didn't want to separate from them when חסרות came All right boys, I'm kissing, you know No, he wasn't picking up and leaving דהה, כן בשמי לא עשו כדי בלהם בכל שכן, בלי עזר ועזריה דהבי יחיד רבים ואחר כך יושב, דהה תיישב מהם ולמוזיקותפסח משום תקנה משה רבינו עליו השלום כדאיתה בגמרא ויש אומרים ויש אומרים מות דין אחרי נמי וחיוב מסע עד חסות אך חיוב סיפור של משחיים כל הלילה ובשלות שבועות עמק יהושע ובשלות שבועות דגל ראובן תרסו דלכן בעל הגדה הסמיך מעשה רבי אלעזר וכולי לסיום וכל הנבא לספר בשל משחיים הרי זה משובח לומר שעיקר זמן החיוב הוא חסות, אוקיי? זאת אומרת, maybe that Haggadah uh, the way it was formulated and each paragraph was pay, placed in its particular spot to tell you that the עיקר זמן of the חיוב is in the חסות. ויותר ממנה למרבה, הרי זה משובח. אוקיי, and now since you did extra, you're praiseworthy, I can. ולפי זה מובן מדוע הרמב״ם לא הזכיר עד חסות או כל הלילה. And that's why we could understand why הרמב״ם didn't mention neither חסות, neither the entire night. לסברתו, שאין חיוב מדינה כל הלילה. כל זה סברה, there is no חיוב from the dean, אוקיי? from עיקר הדין for the entire night. אלא שצריך השתדלות. You have to try, you have to make an effort. והגם שנפסקה הלכה כרבים, but at the same time הלכה זה רק רבים. ודלוק רבי אלעזר בן עזריה, במקום מקום, לא בתורת חיוב, אלא יש הדלות. So we're saying it's not obligatory for other effort counts. He's not really giving us a good solid explanation of either one so far. He was basically trying to show us, you know, the opinions that say the entire night, the opinions that say the hasot, But he's not coming down with an iron fist or with a strong argument proving to us either side. He's Iraqi. Well, it's not that because he's Iraqi and not Iraqi. He's, he's, he's having a hard time with it himself, you can tell. It could be because he doesn't want people to read the Teshuvah, maybe. And he also doesn't want to do it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I'm not going to make an effort to do any more. He wants people to continue to do an effort. It could be, or it could be that he's still going to build up to it. But it looks like he's going to touch on another question now. Yeah, I, I just, you know, it sounds to me, I don't know why he took this route. And talk, talk, what's it? But it sounds to me that the Siyad is cool, he's separate. Separate from what? From the Hilat Nassar, the Hilat Maror, and all this. Why is he doing that? Mm-hmm. Exactly what we're in the Haggadah. והגדתה למלכה ביום ההוא לאמור בעמו זה בשעה שמסע ומרור מונחים לפניך. וזה לשון הרמב״ם, וזה לשון הזה הגדה. So you cannot say that they are disconnected from one another. They are definitely connected to one another. Yes, if you don't have food for us, 
He was still Hayab in the Sipur, he said, Mishraim. Nobody's saying no. If you don't have, you're on a desert oil, you're in jail, you work well, you still have the Hayyub. Right, because that's the, night, Asim that's the night of Masao Maro. Right. Right. So, it implies that at any time that at night the Masao Maro was there, it doesn't matter if you say, Uda is finished already. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds, and I think that that's the way, I mean, that's the way I, I always understood that Mishnah. Ayyub mm Mesubin -hmm. Kolotah Halayla. I don't think, you know, it doesn't sound like they were eating the entire night. Could be. But if there's no echreah. There's no... Well, they weren't eating the entire night, but they were, what do you call, they were discussing. Right, right. so they, the they need night. to have the masal maror in front of them the entire night. You assume not. You assume they ate. I know? assume they ate too. That's why I have a problem with what he was saying before. He said here on the bottom, when he was calling the, he was calling the Mechilta first, Right? Yachum in Rosh Hodesh, Yachum be Odium. And then he says over here, Shesarif Shakarat, Hemunaha, the Fanaf, Kozim and Seder. Okay, and then after you, you finish eating, you bring back the Kara. Never seen that in my life. Personally. We don't do that. Kara leaves the table at that point when you, and when you finish eating, it makes no sense to have a Kara on the table. The Kara was the person's plate, technically. And there are those that have customs where every person has their own their own ka'ara. They have everything in front of them. Once you finish eating it, what do you need, still need that for? Doesn't make sense to have it there at that, right. you know, at that point anymore. You would think. You would think. You know. Hmm? No, we'll discuss that later. That's a whole different issue. I don't want to go on a million different tangents right now. My question to you is here. When the food comes out, the kiara goes is definitely removed from the table because you make a room for all the the platters of food. Does the kiara ever come back? No. You ever see the kiara come back? No. So he's making it like you know, right? yeah, like peshita. That's true. The kiara comes back. Yeah. yeah. You know, like it's like everybody agrees upon it, and I don't see that at all. Maybe the Iraqis do bring it back. I don't know. I don't think so. Not as far as I know, they don't. We see. I, I, I just don't remember. I don't. I don't remember anybody saying that the kara is brought back at that point. We bring. We bring that thing in. We eat, and that's it. That's Hala. it. Mm. There's no kara. That's why I have a problem with what he's saying. Anyway. So you know, you have masa on the table, of course. Right. You have masa. Goni malav halil. Goni malav hagada. Fine. And all that stuff you ate from already. Right, everything is uh, you ate. So that's why that's why the kara exactly. cannot come back. The Makes no sense. Finished. You bring empty kara to the table. Yeah. That's on. It's on. The kara is on. I have a problem with that. So if you All right, let's continue. That's a great question. Okay. Well, the bear she ate. In the chol he ate ayat b'leil yom tov. Yeah, he went. He went on something else. So where did he leave us on the other one? Basically, he left us on. That he opened with Rambam. And he closed with Rambam. The Rambam does not mention at Hasot, and Rambam does not mention Kohel Leila. Okay? So he wants his study loot. Right. You do what you can. Do what you can. Do what you can. As long as you told the story of Yisrael Messiah, you do, you, and you made your effort, that's good enough based right. on Rambam. Right. Right. And everybody has to make an effort. He still has to tell us now if we have to actually read it, if we could just verbalize it, if we could listen to it, if we could think about it, that's part of his question. All right, let's continue. Well, the best you have in the Holy Spirit, but I'm told that we have to be awake the entire night of Yom Tov, and is it correct? Hinni ma ma asir shabah gada bil azar habirad shi ashbu at habbukir shi min adam isvaika bi isura or hashashash al sa'ar. Thank you. If we base himself, if we if we base ourselves upon the story that we read in the Haggadah of these five Hakamim in Bnei Berak, that they hung out discussing in Yisrael Mitzrayim until the, the morning, well, maybe there's a Mitzvah here, and we definitely cannot say that you know there's an issue that it would be forbidden. We cannot say that it's Sa'ar. That's how he's opening up so far. 
וכן בתוספתא דלעיל, דיבר רבן גמליאל והחכמים בבית ביתוס בן זונין בלוד, שעז כה על קרות הגבר. רגע תאף מהרמן. ואין כתב המהר"ל, בלשונו, כדי שלא יקשה לך אם הם היו מונעים השינה מעיניהם ביום טוב, אמרו שלא היה להם שער, כי מחיבור המזווה היה הזירה קרסה להם מאוד, שלא הרגישו עד שעלה עמוד השער. וכי כתב היה הזירה קרסה להם, שלא היו סיבורים שעלה עמוד השער, עד כאן לשונו. So, my mother is saying, basically, that you, say, you don't think that they were, you know, straining and preventing themselves from sleeping, you know, on the night of Yom Tov to enjoy, you know, their sleep on Yom Tov so they can enjoy the night of Yom Tov. No, they didn't even notice. They were enjoying the Mizvah and the, the discussion so much that nobody, you know, realized that, you know, it's already dawn has broke. And, you know... It, the time just ran very, very quickly. Time, like you say, time flies. Then time was flying. They didn't even realize it at all. And that's all it was. Barbanel is telling you, yeah, you have obligation to be awake the entire night, because when many say left the slime, they did not sleep the entire night. Umash Gatab, Munei Harab, Rui Hayim Palachi, Zekhron Lablacha, Gebe Tikun Kareed, Bele Shabbat Kodesh. Okay? Bipma Hayim Palachi has a Teshuvah about it in his Lab Hayim, Volume 2. Veha Ayla, the Esor, Liyot Ayr Kod Halayla, Mishum Onik Shabbat. You want to see the book? Okay, so there's an issue of Tikkun I don't know if you know what Tikkun Kareet is, David, do you? No. All right. Basically, it's something that's written on Thursday nights, generally. But over here, he has a question about doing it on the night of Shabbat. Friday night, right. Okay? Friday night. And basically, he doesn't like the idea at all, and he says it's a sur to stay up the entire night because you are... Ruining on Shabbat. Shabbat the end of the Pesach. No, of course not. This is a very weird book. Bishamim Rosh is a book where, as we all know, we say, No, Bishamim Rosh. You know, basically, once thought I was given a Sinai, you know, we can't throw our questions up to the Shalom and wait for answers. You know, wait for a, even if we hear, we actually hear, you know, a heavenly voice come out and say, this is what to do, or this is not what to do, we're not going to listen to it. We have to actually go through the halakhic process to figure things out. And this book, it seems, is a book of bunch of questions that were thrown up to Shamayim and Shamayim answered. <laughs> you ever heard of this? Hi, I mean, first they showed me a Shamayim. Oh, yeah. They showed me a Shamayim too, yes. <laughs> that was a great one. That was a, who was this? Who was the author of the... Uh, I'd have to look it up. I have no idea. Okay. I want to find out. And basically this book, it seems like it's a fake book. And somebody wrote it basically to either make fun of Halakha or to badmouth the Rosh. Oh, wow. This is I mean Rosh. Okay, because you see Rosh. Alright. It's about, it's the same the Rosh wrote it. And maybe it's not Bishamim Rosh, but it's Bishamayim Rosh. And they said it's in the clouds. Uh-huh. You understand? It's a play. You have to understand. Anyway, 
מעיין מה שכתב עליו הגאון החתן סופר, וכן בשל שבועות פרשת מרדכי, ובספר הבירי, וכן כתב בשל שבועות הביע עומר. ובוודאי שלא יעלה לדעת, שלא יזהיר איזה ראשון או אחרון, אם היה חשש איסור בזה. מעיין פירוש מהר"ל על ההגדה שכתב שאם הוא אדם חלש, if you are a weak person, ואי אפשר לו לתלדה שחרית בכוונה ללא שינה, and you will not be able to pray שחרית with כוונה if you don't sleep, מוטב שיהיה שם. אבייסלי זה בלפי אוסלי. גם הגאון היעבס בסידורו שערי שמיים כתב כן. אז היעבס ביעקב בן סבי, write the same thing, בצד עבדה חתם סבי. וכן כתב מונה הרר בחיים פלאצ'י בספרו חיים לראש. שאם יחלש כוחו ויהיה נים ולא נים, בעצם יהיה דוזין און ונוף, יעשה סחרו בהפסדו, ויהיה תתוב ושכבת וערבה שנתך. Better off, go to sleep, enjoy your sleep, and wake up with a, you know, fresh head and clear head. What is it? Come on, hey, Eric, what's it? It's said that he's on the Bible, Moshe Ben Makir. Said that he's on is a fascinating book. It's a book that was written slightly before the Shohan Aruch, in the outskirts, in the mountains, outskirts of Safed, by this old-time Hassan from Safed, not somebody who came from Sefarad. במשה בן מכיר, a lot of interesting things in there. Book on halakha and on ways of life and how to think about things, very nice book, beautiful book. שכמה טוב חלקו בגורלו של מי שיכול להישאר עיר כל הלילה כחמישה זקנים הנזכרים בהגדה. He says how beautiful it is, you know, how wonderful this person's portion is and his lot is if you were able to. Stay up like these great five great Hathemi. It's not for everybody, but if you can, it's wonderful. Obviously, don't waste the night. You know, actually discuss, you know, what, uh, what happened, what transpired. Rahzot nasinu b'leil shabu'ot, shenahagu liyot a'ilim kol ha'layla v'na'asok b'torah, toratenu ha'kedosha, v'lo ha'shishu shivu l'yom tov. And obviously we stay up the night of yom tov of shabu'ot, and we're not worried, so it's definitely mutar. So over here it's mutar as well. ונזכר בספר מגיד משני למרן, ונזכר בשני לוחות הברית, והמקור על פי זוהר הקדוש, ובשאר הכוונות הארי, מגיד אברהם, פרי חדש, פרקי יוסף שם, מקום מקום, ודאי, הכה בפסח, סיפור של המצרים, כל הדעת רוב הפוסקים, ולא תעשה מדאורייתה, ובוודאי מי שיכול להישאר עיר כל הלילה, קדוש יאמר לו. וכמו שראינו שנהרו כמה רבנן קדישי בירושלים תיבנה ותיכונן. תיבנה ותיכונן. So he's saying all the more so on this night of Pesach, when we have a Mizvat Asir de Uraita to discuss Yisrael Misraim, then if you're able to do that on the night of Pesach, you can be considered Kadosh. You are holy. And obviously it's not something that everybody does, and very, very few people do. And I said, this is something that we see certain very, very holy rabbis in Yerushalayim do. But even though he seems to be pushing the idea, because he likes the idea, he's very, very clear telling you it's not for everybody. Right, right, right. You know, and he seems to imply that we don't know, even know about this happening, you know, in Husla artists throughout the years. You know, that, that the people were living in different communities in different countries. We know a few certain saintly, you know, hachamim here in Yerushalayim. That's it. So it's an important thing. It's obviously not for everybody because it may ruin your holiday. Also, in, in Israel it's different when it's only one night of the Haggadah. When you do it, Two nights, you yeah. can stay up the whole night doing that. And the next day you're going to be wasting. You're not going to be able to stay up the next night to do Haggadah at all. You know, you have a problem. But well, definitely not for some, you know, for the Gula. And that's most probably why we didn't hear about it before. Whereas in Israel, the Yeshua basically was always a small group. You know, there wasn't so many Jewish people living in, in, in Israel. You know, mm-hmm. you had the four uh, holy cities and here and there some others. But that was it really. And even then, it wasn't small, you know, there were small communities, and if the guy stayed up the whole night, they'd look at him like, well, you know, what's going on? And if he did it, he did it, you know, bisna'ah, he did not publicize it to anybody. You know, and that was probably just the hachem of the city, if anybody who did it. 